Hello everybody, yes, this is my pick of the week. Surprised me. It is spread issue number seven from writer Justin Jordan and guest artist Liam Cobb. More about him later. Um, but yes, this took me by surprise. Um, again, if you watch my video on Wednesday, I was saying that I was kind of on the fence about this book. Um, I wasn't sure whether it was an ongoing, if it was a mini-series. I was kind of wanting the story to kind of move on a great deal. It was a bit samey, although it was good samey. I just wanted a bit more progression with the story and to see where we were going with it. Um, but this issue, despite it being kind of like a flashback, an origin story about our pastor here, um, it was a huge improvement, a huge improvement. But I think it might be short lived, but I wanted to promote this book just for this issue alone because I thought it was so good. Because it did one of those things that comics try very hard to do but sometimes most of the time don't succeed at and that is changing your perception about a certain character uh rick remender did it last in um black science with um nadia um he, they kind of switched him from evil corporate guy to wanting to save uh, and protect the children from a man he just killed here, we kind of we go back in time to when the spread wasn't as abundant as it is now in our post-apocalyptic world, and that you know they're gathering people within very large civilizations, keeping the spread at bay, constantly outrunning it, and we move to these three. They are basically scientists. Uh, they are stuck outside of civilization. They're looking for the cure that will save them from the spread. And obviously not having a great deal of luck. They are cut off from all civilization. They, are, they, they can't communicate with them. So they are basically, they are sitting ducks in a way. And it's two of these scientists while out on um, kind of patrol, I guess, um, save a, a young boy who um, seems to be immune to the spread. And of course, we found our cure. However, there is a kind of twist to it in that it's not just a case of taking a sample of blood they have to experiment on this child. They have to basically vivisect him. And we have our one scientist, Graham, who we see as a very humane type of guy. He's the one who's kind of wanting to save the boy right at the beginning and not just leave him from the spread, wanting to kind of cure, not cure, um, mend his wounds because it looks like he's got a bite mark on. He wants to protect and look after the child and we see a very um, good person and he is kind of obviously wracked with, with guilt about what really needs to happen to this boy so that uh, one might die but millions upon millions will be saved and he is not going to let that happen. Unfortunately, he has no choice, but that's when this kind of turns and we see the birth of our pastor as, and, and now because we've always seen the pastor as a kind of an evil character, but after seeing his origin uh, of being such a, a kind of altruistic, um, humane character with very good morals and ethics, you wonder, has that progressed? Despite his kind of weird mental change um, and being taken over by the spread and becoming what we see him as now, we wonder now, is there more to this character than we first realised? 
uh, just a great interesting look and, and a kind of building and enriching a character that we had kind of preconceptions about. Um, of course I wanted to come back to Liam Cobb who did the artwork, the guest artist in here. I wish he could stay on for much, much longer. He is, I, he is a much more accomplished artist um, and he still has that horror element to it. There are kind of horrific moments in this book but they are done with much more finesse. The blood, the guts, the gore, it's still there, but it's done with, dare I say it, class. Um, he is only a guest artist for this issue, but, you know, if Justin Jordan's watching, <laughs> um, get him back. He's really good for this book.